good afternoon uh, everyone uh, i am dr amita vikrama i am an interventional radiologist at uh, apollo hospitals banaveta uh, road bangalore uh, hi i am uh, dr arun putaro uh, consultant cardiovascular and thoracic surgeon at uh, the same hospital apollo banaveta bangalore so today we are going to speak about our experience with uh, an emergency uh, uh, case uh, in a 76 year old uh, man who came uh, with severe uh, abdominal pain uh, during the lockdown period initial lockdown period uh, for the covid 19 and uh, we will take you to the story uh, and uh, this is interesting to know that uh, we could treat this uh, patient with uh, no major uh, morbidities and mortality and this happened approximately some two months ago and uh, this patient uh, is around 76 year old uh, gentleman living with his wife and both of them uh, are staying in bangalore and one day he suddenly presented with uh, severe abdominal pain and he was about to faint so then they were taken to a, a private hospital nearby where they did some initial uh, examination and all and then they said that he needs some further evaluation this looks something like and on the something uh, more or something dangerous happening in the abdomen because the hemoglobin had dropped to 5 gram per cent usually it's be somewhere around 13 so you can uh, they figured it out that he had some massive bleeding inside his you know, his body so they wanted to know where exactly it might have happened and uh, so they had asked for some initial scans they can order some scan and uh, ct scan uh, like that so the initial uh, ultrasound and ct scan showed that he had something called as uh, uh, abdominal aortic aneurysm so abdominal aorta uh, uh, it, it is something like it, it is a tube it is a channel uh, it blood but the largest blood vessel which carries the blood from the heart and it supplies the whole of the body so this part of the tube the vessel which it, it, it's a big vessel almost the size of say around 3 uh, plus centimeters in diameter and as it comes out in the abdomen it will be somewhere around 2 cm so this vessel started ballooning out and expanding uh, we call this as an aneurysm aneurysm of the abdominal aorta so once it starts enlarging and ballooning out after certain uh, size it gives way and it ruptures when the patient will have blood loss severe blood loss and we can lose him this is a fatal condition wherein most of the patients we lose before they are shifted to the hospital so this patient was fortunate enough to be alive even after an initial bleeding and i will show the image uh, can you show the next uh, image of the aortic aneurysm so you can yeah this you can see that this is the aorta and the upper part of that you can see that is of normal caliber as it come down you can see that it's ballooned out and it's about to rupture and and that's the normal uh, aorta and this is the aneurysm uh, aorta and this is where these are the two blood vessels which goes towards the both the left right and left side and uh, this is the deceased aorta which had ballooned out and it was uh, uh, it had and he had significant bleeding because of this and the hemoglobin had dropped because of this and he could also feel something like a second heart in the abdomen this was this uh, explanation he felt that if he could he could uh, palpate on the abdomen he felt something like a second heart which is pulsating so that he was feeling this particular uh, aneurysmally ballooned out uh, vessel so he went to uh, another hospital there where they could treat and where they had offered him uh, uh, surgical repair initially then followed by uh, stenting Uh, I think uh, the details, uh, surgical details, and all, Dr. Arul will uh, tell you. Uh, so yeah, thanks, Dr. Amita. So this gentleman, uh, I had the opportunity to see him uh, once he got admitted in his hospital, and uh, like Dr. Amita mentioned, uh, he was a frail-looking 76-year-old uh, gentleman, and uh, he didn't have a clue about what was going on till about a week back. Uh, I asked him how it all happened. He said, like Dr. Amita mentioned, he just felt unconscious one day and. Uh, Uh, lo and behold, just shocking news to him that he got something huge in his uh, belly, which needs surgery. So he underwent the uh, scans, and uh, it was uh, diagnosed to be a huge abdominal aortic aneurysm. 
Now, for those of us who don't understand why this occurs, um, this happens with people who are of a certain age, who have certain predisposing factors like high blood pressure, um, who are prone to what we call uh, atherosclerosis, that is uh, degeneration of the vessel walls. And also in those people who are chronic smokers, have high cholesterol, uncontrolled blood pressure, and generally elderly age. And another factor is uh, if you have got a history of uh, aortic aneurysms in the family, there is uh, a high possibility that even you might end up having an aortic aneurysm develop within your son time or the other. So that is about aortic aneurysms in, gen in general. Coming to the gentleman again, uh, I happened to examine him, pretty looking uh, gentleman, uh, quite thin. Um, and like uh, Dr. Amitabh mentioned, his hemoglobin was on the lower side. His, uh, his kidney function was around uh, 1.4, 1.5. The creatinine value, which showed that it was uh, on the upper end of uh, the normal limit. And uh, we went through various options. I think at the outside hospitals, he was uh, told that uh, he would have to go in for uh, complicated open surgery. And he was not a candidate for uh, this uh, procedure that uh, Dr. Amita mainly devised and I had the opportunity to help out with. So with open surgery, he would have been, um, you know, under general anesthesia, there would have been a huge cut in the belly. And uh, what made this aneurysm challenging was uh, the upper part of the aneurysm was very close to, if you see over here, these are the renal, that's, that's the kidney. It was very close and uh, just about uh, a few millimeters short of the blood supply to the kidney. When that occurs uh, in an elderly gentleman with uh, all these comorbidities of uh, frailty, low hemoglobin, and he also had um, kidney functions which were deranged, like I said, borderline lung functions, taking through an open surgery would uh, involve more morbidity. Morbidity means, you know, the post-op recovery is longer, the dysfunction of organs like uh, damage to the kidney and other organs is longer, there is chance of damage uh, to the intestine and things like that. So uh, we were thinking of an endovascular approach to try and avoid open surgery because uh, both of us were very well versed with how a well-planned and uh, executed endovascular procedure helps most of these patients. Now, um, this endovascular procedure was slightly more challenging because for normal aneurysms, uh, you know, if these are the vessels supplying the kidney, the aneurysm is somewhere here and goes down here. So just deploy, you, you can explain. Dr. Amita will explain to you what a normal endovascular procedure is. Yeah. So this one, this is how uh, the graft comes. This we call as a pyjama graft. So this is the main body and this has two limbs uh, which goes to the right and uh, left side. There will be an extension on this side also. So when we deploy this, you can see that this is the covered part of the graft. So this is made of uh, a metallic framework and we have a PTFE uh, coating. That is a polyethylene coating so that blood flows through this and the aneurysm will be outside like this. So blood will flow only to this and aneurysm will not be getting any blood. This is how we put. But what happens is that in this case, for this particular stent, to exactly fit into the iota, at least we should have some 1 to 2 centimeter of normal segment of iota which will hold this proximal part of this or else it will easily slip down into the aneurysm and again blood will start leaking out. So here because the renal arteries were very close, renal arteries means uh, the blood vessels which supplies the kidneys as you can see there uh, on the image. So this is the right side of the renal artery and that's the left side renal artery and we have a very small like around 6 millimeters uh, distance from the left side. So if we uh, if we want both renal arteries and if we place this just below the renal artery, then the neck will be very small and it will not support this particular graft and the graft, the chance of the graft will slip down is very high. So in this case we have to extend this up but if we put it too much up the renal arteries will get closed because if the renal arteries fall somewhere here, then it won't get any blood supply. In that case, both the kidneys will die and patient will land up in dialysis. So this patient, we didn't want any complications. So we thought of doing something called an on-table fenestration for this particular graft. So fenestration means holes 
so we make some small holes on both sides so that to the holes there will be some blood supply to the kidneys so uh, can you show the next slide yeah this is how you can see that on table we have opened the graph and uh, you can see that the hole made in the graph there and the hole uh, you can see it's all beautifully stitched uh, in, along the walls of the hole uh, by dr arul and his uh, team so after that making those holes we need to deploy this particular graph exactly into the place so that these holes will match the renal ostium renal arterial ostium so that the blood will start flowing if there is any twisting or uh, any shift of the graph up and up or below then the holes will not match then the kidneys will lose its blood supply and both kidneys will die so we have just an hour or so to save those 30 minutes to save those kidneys if suppose in case if it doesn't match so we had to plan properly and to study where exactly the renal arteries are coming and exactly we had to put holes onto this graph and then then uh, then deploy this graph so that it will be supplying the kidneys as well as the aorta we also get something called as ready made uh, I mean customized uh, penetrated graph to the company if suppose we give the details of this uh, ct scan to the company they will make some holes on their own and then they'll give that but it will take at least a month or two to get that this patient of ours we didn't have that much time because he already had one bout of bleeding and we didn't know whether he would survive through the uh, procedure as well so this, this is the uh, uh, seriousness of this procedure and this particular condition is a very morbid and uh, uh, it's a very morbid condition so we, we could not uh, had waited for a month or two so that's why we devised that we will make the holes on our own on table and We'll deploy the graph. So, like Dr. Amitabh mentioned, there are you know these are customized graphs, uh, graphs which come, and uh, the main problem for us is these companies are not in uh, India; they're most uh, abroad, specifically the US. So, getting them across is um, uh, is a huge challenge, and with these lockdown times, uh, getting these graphs itself was a huge challenge for us to try and do our uh, on-table customized graphs. Um, But I think uh, regularly it takes about one month for those graphs to come back. Minimum. Minimum. Now, what made this uh, possible for us was Dr. Amita himself. Uh, he's a trained uh, interventional radiologist, so he has a proper understanding of the 3D anatomy. 3D means he knows uh, exactly the aorta. He can visualize because he's been looking at scans ever since his training. He knows where which vessel is coming off at what angle and things like that. And I've had the good fortune of assisting him on a few other cases, um, and uh, every time he's got a plan in mind, he knows exactly at what centimeter, what angulation, what depth, and what size the holes have to be made. So that goes a long way in, uh, you know, guaranteeing the success of this procedure, like uh, we found out later on. So the rest of the procedure, I think, Dr. Amita will take over. so we uh, as planned uh, we deployed the when we unsheet the, the graph there on table we made a hole and uh, dr prarul uh, has made that hole appear proper and he secured the walls of that and uh, this procedure what dr prarul has made it has saved almost 178 lakh for the patient because normally this graph would uh, cost around 5 lakh if it were to be a customized penetrated graph from the company it will cost around some 12 to 13 lakh So then, after this, we had to resheath this back and then take inside the uh, body. And uh, so, a small uh, surgery Dr. Arul made uh, in the groin uh, to take this uh, graft because these will be crimped. All these grafts will be crimped, and it will be. So uh, the, the 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 incisions involved. Incisions means the cut is you know we call these the groin where uh, the blood vessels go to the leg. So there's a huge artery called the femoral artery over there. we make about uh, this much of a skin incision expose the artery and both the sides you know the the, the sheet that is uh, what is shown over there goes up to deploy the graft that's what he was uh, mentioning next slide yeah this uh, in this slide you can see uh, dr arul uh, uh, he is teaching that borders of that uh, particular penetrate so this is again uh, very important to make sure that this whole uh, next one yeah Will not expand once we uh, put that inside, and it will just fit into the 
size of the renal vessels next slide yeah this is uh, this is the x-ray image uh, we have uh, deployed the graft partially you can see that this is a smaller uh, limb this is a smaller limb uh, what has opened up there and to the left side this is the right side we have come and here we have got the uh, fenestration for the renal arteries and you can see two more cells which have been deployed uh, to supply the renal arteries so we have come from above also from the hand this we have come from below through the hole in the uh, femoral artery in the groin and we have made another small hole in the brachial artery in the hand and from there we have got two wires and each wire has gone into each of the renal arteries and we have deployed uh, two stents across this fenestration and so that we have got the fenestration uh, right in the place next stent next one yeah this is uh, uh, the post uh, the ct angio after a month we have done and you can see that uh, both the that's the renal artery on the right side that's the renal artery on the left side this renal artery stent and the left renal artery and this is the aortic graft with the two limbs and you can see that there is no blood flow outside the graft into the aneurysm and good blood flow is seen into the renal artery next one yeah so this is the angiographic image of the pre uh, procedure you can see that the aneurysm uh, aneurysm is dilated aorta and this is the post and it's come back to its normal uh, size and with the both the renal arteries also being uh, filled and uh, all arteries are filling and the aorta is going and that's going to the right side and left side next slide so this is the ct reconstruction image how this aorta was there earlier and it was at the uh, it was almost around 7 cm plus if it's more than 5.5 cm in diameter the risk is very high that uh, uh, the patient will have a rupture and uh, this is the post uh, stenting you can see all the arteries are filling that's the renal arteries and that's the aorta and this is the artery to the right side to the left leg and this is the pre and post hence uh, after this procedure the patient uh, recovered uh, soon because it was a very small that in the groin which dr arul had made so it just took few days for uh, it to heal and uh, within 4 uh, 5 days we discharged the patient as well and this is the ct scan uh, done after a month which is showing that everything is fine and there is no leak and patient uh, what he was feeling a second heart in his abdomen that has disappeared now that's what he uh, uh, he said that second heart in abdomen and uh, he is stable his hemoglobin has uh, picked up to around 11 now and he is still fine and uh, the one more thing to this story was that during this covid uh, lockdown period uh, he could uh, he could he could not get his uh, children besides him when he really wanted uh, because one of his uh, son is in mumbai and other one is in uk both could not travel the mumbai uh, the person who stayed at mumbai he got some special permission he came down all the way to bangalore but once he landed here then he was quarantined for two weeks so by the time we could have the, the surgery everything would have been finished or so he had to go back to mumbai and uh, fortunately everything went on well and the patient also got discharged early so this uh, uh, about this particular fenestrated uh, evr we call endovascular aortic repair wherein uh, we try to prevent some major surgery and major cut down so this uh, uh, this we call it minimally invasive procedure with this procedure uh, the cut in the body and all will be very small cut or there won't be any cut at all and the hospital stay will be very less patient will recover faster and they also will respond to the treatment very well and because we have a good uh, uh, cardiac surgery backup dr arul is uh, very well uh, trained in aortic surgery and all he does lot of uh, big surgery on aorta in the chest and in the abdomen and all so we have the backup of this uh, cardiovascular team and we have a very good cardiology team and uh, very good the cardiac anesthetist i mean this the whole uh, this, this is a team effort not uh, like it is not a play of an individual this whole team is very important every one in the team if they perform well then it transforms to a good result in the patient this is what exactly happened in this patient and uh, uh, the patient took 